Um, all my fandom, for full disclosure, you are like my baby brother or my or my adopted son, and that's because it was back when the Arab Spring was in full swing that you came to Stanford along with the Palestinian group DAM D A M. And uh, and I think uh, you really made an impact on the Stanford community, Stanford students at the time. Here you are, over a decade later, returning to Stanford. Do you have any memories from that event where you performed and also uh, lectured here at Stanford? Oh my goodness, of course, of course. It was an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, the brothers from Dem did an incredible job on stage performing. Uh, watching their trajectory over the last decade plus has been incredible. Uh, and, and I definitely remember it. I mean, that was basically what started uh, my relationship with Stanford. Since then, I've done a lot of work, uh, not just with you, but with uh, Dr. Jeff Chang as well, through different initiatives and uh, Professor uh, Sami Alim. And, it's just been, it's been awesome to be uh, able to kind of connect with you all over the years. Uh, but I'll never forget it. Yeah, it was a really beautiful experience. There was a lot of incredible energy there. And, uh, and yeah, you know, if you'd asked me back then, you know, would I still be doing it now? I'm not, I'm not sure what I would have said, but here we are. I'm really happy that I am and that, you know, we've been able to keep it. We are so proud of you, Omar, because you really are filling a void here. I mean, when we talk about Syria and we talk about everything that has gone on in the Middle East and how interrelated everything is in a way, uh, we everybody's looking for representation through hip hop, through poetry, through uh, songs, and you have managed to establish yourself as this amazing Syrian American rapper. In fact, I will go back to the album Syrian Americana, which I think remains and should always remain a classic. Uh, that album uh, doesn't get old. It's always being played on my show, whether I'm playing your Finjan remix of the Abdel Halim classic to uh, Hadi Dimashku, to Nizar Qabbani. I mean, maybe these names don't mean that much to some of the listeners today, but how would you sum up that album? And why do you think it has such staying power? Oh, wow. Well, thank you, first of all, for continuing to play it and to, to not even just put it on your show, but to also uh, use it at your presentations. I saw you delivering a lecture in Beirut recently where you were also talking about the album. So I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I think uh, just something to say about this moment, I find like, you know, while what when I had started, it might have been unique to see a Syrian American rapper doing what I do now, I mean, truly just the explosion of, uh, of music from younger artists all over, not just the Arab world, but the diaspora as well has been fascinating. Um, I mean, you have Syrians in Europe, you have Syrians, you know, in Canada, Syrians all over the world, and not just Syrians, Palestinians, of course, Lebanese, um, you know, all kinds of artists, Egyptians, Moroccans and you know the void has been filled tenfold I think now and mm -hmm. so much so that when I you know performed at the World Cup last month you know uh, it was incredible to be there and see that energy and, and, and be a part of the experience and at the final the closing you had Wiggs you know this international star a huge huge Egyptian rapper from Egyptian. Scandinavia uh, you know which shows you where, how far hip-hop has come how far you know a rap has come in the Arab world yeah, it's hip hop and the Arab world seem to go hand to hand in hand now. But yeah. I remember how, how resistant people were to that genre, uh, mm -hmm. thinking that you were maybe imitating the West or right. just taking hip hop, not understanding how much of that can be applied to marginalized peoples in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially in terms of the Syrian and Palestinian experience, hip hop lends itself so well. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about, you know, hip hop and the Arab world? It's just an amazing thing to see something grow and become this huge wave, you know, uh, and, and now it's like there's so many sub genres, you know, like some of these artists, I'm not even sure if they call themselves, you know, hip hop artists or uh, they, they have their own just sort of like localized versions of it, which I think is really cool, you know, that pull from the local shabby music, from the folkloric music, from dance and, and electronic music, and they make it their own. And I think that's just like for me, a very exciting thing to see. You know, we, we mentioned Dem earlier and one of the artists from Dem, Sohail, is now like a major, uh, 
a player in the music industry through Empire Records, which is based in San Francisco, not too far from where you are. Uh, and he's spearheading the Empire uh, West Asia, North Africa sort of initiative. And there's so many incredible artists that they're cultivating there and creating this, this new, like really um, just a necessary space, you know, for young people to be able to express themselves on ways that are just on par with the way like, you know, the industry is, is, is putting music out these days. I think that's really great. Uh, but to kind of go back, I think something special about Sierra Americana for me is just that it, it sort of, um, as far as my artistry is concerned, it, it, it created a foundation for me to build on where it showcased the different things that I'm interested in, the different ways I like to express myself, represent myself. There is some political music in there. There was some, like you said, poetic translations and you know, reflective sort of music in there. Uh, talking about my mother and my father, the loss of my father, et cetera. More playful songs in there as well. Uh, deeper Arab storytelling. And all of that is what I ultimately continued doing for the next, like, what is it now? 12 years since then, 11 years. Um, <laughs> where in different ways, you know, there are points in my career, I think you've mentioned the Arab Spring, the Arab revolutions where, uh, you know, I kind of leaned more political, so to speak. And then now I find myself in this really um, exciting uh, storytelling sort of space and historic sort of uh, storytelling, retelling of the Arab American um, journey, you know, and Shu'ara and Mahjar, uh, whom we all know and love, uh, Khalid Gibran, Amir Rehani, Mikhail Naima, uh, people like them who influenced uh, countless writers in the Arab world, but aren't necessarily as well known here in America as they should be given the fact that they were American and that they were writing here, you know? And so that was a big reason why I wanted to embark on that journey. For folks who don't know, I've been developing them musical called Little Syria, you know, a theatrical sort of Hakalati style storytelling project, um, you know, where I, I have live Arabic instrumentation on stage, beats as well, costume changes, visuals, uh, and it's just like a, a real, um, again, like an evolution of all of these things that I love packed into into one performance. Uh, and we've sold out um, the Brooklyn Academy of Music a couple of, uh, three times actually last year, um, the Hero Arts Center in Manhattan. Um, and I should point out, I no longer live in California, sadly. I left in 2021. You um, left us for New York, huh? Uh, I, left you, I left California for New York, but you know, Cali will always be in my heart and have a huge place in my heart. I spent 17 years in California and it's always gonna be a big part of who I am, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that brings me to the uh, uh, event here at Stanford that's gonna go on on Saturday, January 28th. There are two performances, one at 7 p.m., one at 9 p.m. They are at the studio, which is affiliated, of course, with the Bing Concert Hall. It's yeah. Omar Ofendam with Oud Virtuoso Ronnie Mali for two shows that night. Do contact us if you are a Stanford student and want a discounted ticket. Otherwise, that's selling out very quickly. So especially yeah. the seven o'clock show, I'm also honored to uh, be on stage uh, moment uh, for a moment with Omar to introduce him. Uh, but uh, Omar, it is called Coast to Coast, Reflections mm -hmm. from Al-Andalus to Los Angeles. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, can you give us a little bit of an idea of what to expect? Absolutely. So, um, you know, I've, I've presented my work at universities for many, many years. One of the things that I love doing is being able to kind of just dive a little deeper into some of the inspiration behind the music. Uh, you know, I'm a big, big history buff, a history nerd. I've always, always loved being able to kind of connect the dots historically with, you know, what I do. Uh, and, you know, what I found in, in Rani Ma'ali was a was sort of beautiful foil to that uh, musically and sonically. He does the same thing uh, with, with music. And so, you know, we've put together a presentation that really takes audiences on a journey, as we said, from an to Los Angeles, but basically talking about these connections uh, explicit and implicit connections in uh, the music and the culture. And he literally takes you on a journey through this instrument, through the oud, you know, from where it began, uh, you know, with Ziryab traveling across, uh, you know, from Iraq all the way to, to Al Andalus and, and establishing uh, the importance of this instrument that then went on to become you know, the lute and laud, and that was used in, in music, you know, all across the Spanish diaspora, Spanish speaking diaspora. Um, so uh, I do the same thing sort of poetically, taking people on this journey. Um, 
And in between, we also talk about uh, the things that people know me for, as I mentioned earlier, you know, some of the Arab American um, history or historical sort of poetic chapters that took place in New York in the early 1900s. Uh, and then the work that, you know, I, I did uh, during my time, my 17 years in Southern California in Los Angeles, um, latest uh, project being Lost in Translation, which I put together with uh, Thanks Joey back in 2020. Uh, Thanks Joey is a Syrian American beat maker, uh, born and raised in Brooklyn and uh, living in Los Angeles. And I didn't know it at the time when I was making the album. Uh, it was initially what I conceived of as a love letter to Los Angeles, but it ended up being a sort of goodbye letter uh, because it, we put it out literally months before I ended up moving. Um, but in it, you see a lot of these same sort of like reflections and connections where I talk about how life in Southern California, you close your eyes and you almost can imagine being back in Bilad de Sham. So many things can you remind you of it, the mountains, the ocean, the you know, the, the vegetation, the scenery, uh, there's something there and something really deep about that connection. And I talk about that often in my work. Uh, and I found interesting sort of uh, historical anecdotes in the work of people like Ilya Abimadli when he wrote a poem called Los Angeles in 1948, when he visited for the first time and he saw these same connections that I was talking about. And so uh, it's that kind of stuff that we, that we present in this show. Uh, it's, you know, full of like exciting sort of uh, blends of rap and uh, not just Oud music, but uh, piano as well. Ronnie's an incredible piano player. Um, we're going to miss, uh, thanks Joey, unfortunately he couldn't make it for this show, uh, but he's an important part of our, our, our trio. And, uh, you know, he just wasn't able to make it for this particular uh, concert, but we're going to uh, definitely hold it down for him. And, uh, and, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't think folks in Stanford have ever heard or seen anything like this. So. I know that <laughs> we are. There is a word in Arabic, Omar. <laughs> Such an event. We are beyond thirsty, beyond hungry for an event that weaves stories of the past, present, and future. The influence of Al Andalus on Arabic speaking peoples, even today, on music and culture. I don't think people understand how much Al Andalus is part of our identity and our pride. Mm -hmm as arabic speaking people and you even you go as you said from new york's little syria to the birth of california surf rock where else are people going to get an event like this right here at stanford and at the big concert hall at the studio i also uh omar wanted to say a big hello and uh, much respect to ronnie mali the multi-instrumentalist musician theatrical performer producer who uh, is going to be there and i look forward to meeting him as well. Uh, Omar Habibi, you know you are loved in the Arab world. You are loved in California and New York. Uh, and I know that many of your fans in Jordan, for example, where I spent four months this summer, were accosting me with questions about you. How was it like working with Omar Ofendam? What is he up to? What is he doing? And for their sake, I do want to ask about the way, you know, you, you mentioned performing at the World Cup, then you mentioned performing in different places. I mean, the way you interact with audiences, is it different? Is the vibe different when you are, let's say, in an Arabic country, an Arabic speaking country? Oh, that's a really great question. I mean, I think so. And I think it depends on which Arab country, you know, uh, I have connections to so many Arab countries in different ways. You know, I was actually born in Saudi Arabia and I have this, you know, part of my history that's connected to the Khalij in a certain way. Um, I, I, I was also obviously very Syrian and my, my connection to Syria runs deep. Lebanon, so many family members there. Jordan, the same. Uh, I have yet to perform in Palestine. That's that's like really, really at the top of my list. Inshallah, we can make that happen. Uh, Cairo, my mom was living there up until very recently. Um, and so there's there's so many places, you know, Tunis, I've had the opportunity to perform in as well. So many places I still like to do uh, performances in, but uh, the World Cup was fascinating for me and Rani, and you'll hear us talk about this on Saturday, um, because while it was definitely in the Arab world, it was in Qatar, uh, it was the World Cup. Uh, there were times where I was performing for thousands of people who didn't speak English or Arabic. Uh, and it's like, uh, it was really a test in a lot of ways, you know, and, and a test in terms of like how much music truly is a universal language. And if you're able to entertain audiences who don't even understand what you're saying, I think it like really, really kind of uh, solidifies 
you know, how well of an artist you really are. Uh, and we had the opportunity to do that night after night, you know, uh, almost two dozen times. Um, another thing that was really fascinating about that experience was that it was the first time I, and I didn't think I realized this until I got there, uh, the outcome of the match determined the temperament of the audience. And that was the first <laughs> time that I actually had to experience something like that. And there were so many upsets at the World Cup this year that, you know, it really, really kind of threw us for a loop sometimes. I mean, A, we all know the Cinderella story of Morocco making it so far. And uh, that was just beautiful. The energy was, was incredibly infectious. Um, and Ronnie happens to know uh, an entire repertoire of Moroccan music. So that was really, really great for us. We were able to kind of oh, celebrate yeah. with them. Yeah. Um, not to mention the fact that he's Palestinian. I know quite a bit of Palestinian folkloric music. We, we play it on the Oud and rap and Palestine was represented so beautifully at, at this World Cup this time, this year, uh, last year, forgive me. Um, and then you, you know, on the flip side, you had these upsets. Like I remember when Brazil lost, uh, we were outside of Education City Stadium performing there and the, like we would be performing right before and right after the match, right? So on the way in, uh, thousands and thousands of yellow jerseys because if people aren't familiar, like the entire Arab world loves the Brazilian team. <laughs> so thousands and thousands of yellow jerseys that were not all Brazilian people, but still many were. Uh, and they were super excited. We played some little like Arabic riffs of samba music and, and some um, Bali funk music that Joey had, had had mixed, and it was really exciting. And then they and then they lost to Croatia, and there were maybe like fifteen Croatians there. It was <laughs> the most like you know by far were the were the yellow jerseys all leaving dejected. And, but you know, in that moment, we realized like, look, we're here to to celebrate and honor them and their journey. They're here in our part of the world. We want them to leave, you know, on a, on a high note, on a happy note. As, as sad as it might be, this is still about celebration. This is still about the love of the game and the love of, of you know, celebrating all these cultures coming together. And, uh, and we just turned it into, you know, a, a celebration again, you know, um, and, and I think they appreciated that we were able to lift their spirits in that moment and, and turn it into something positive. And so, and I will say generally this World Cup was really beautiful because it was very uh, just like uh, wholesome, family friendly, mm. you know, uh, there were people out all hours of the night, you know, celebrating with each other, safe, organized, clean, fun. And so, you know, my hat's off to... Uh, yeah. to the Qatari organizers and to FIFA for kind of making that possible. For Alhamdulillah, and for sort of uh, uniting the Arab world, I think, in so many ways. The Arab world, the African world. beyond the sports Asian. event. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, there were people at this World Cup who probably never had been prior, or wouldn't have been able to, just simply because of where it was located. You know, people from Africa, people from different parts of Asia could come. And when we were performing outside of Education City matches, uh, that was an activation, you know, an entertainment activation series that Qatar Foundation was responsible for. And they went out of their way to be very inclusive. They had, it was like a 50 person blind orchestra from South Korea that was performing. They wow. had an incredible, like, uh, like differently abled breakdance crew from different parts of the world. Um, they had, you know, football tricksters like uh, freestylers representing different countries in uh, South America, Iran, uh, just all these places, you know, and uh, again, it was you, just like, Omar oh, Fundam, you were part of that, now and you're bringing of that. some of those experiences with you to Stanford. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can't wait to see you Saturday, January 28th, 7 p.m. And, and 9 p.m. right here at Stanford University. There are still tickets, thankfully, for the 9 o'clock performance, though they're selling out real fast. As Stanford students of Arabic, please reach out to me as we have a deal for you. And Omar, of course, will be delighted to speak to you uh, after the show, I hope, Omar, because I know my Arabic students at Stanford have a little surprise to present to you, uh, to present to you, and that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I like to end with a little bit of Arabic. Uh, so I'm going to uh, hand it over to you because most Arabology listeners happen to be in the Arab world and happen to love you. تحياتي للجمهور العربي اللي عم يسمع ايروبولوجي طبعا الدكتور سلطي بنحييك شكرا لكل السنين كل السنين اللي عم تدعم الموسيقى العربيه فيها 
وطبعا انا كثير كثير مبسوط انه رح اقدر اجي وشوفك يوم السبت ان شاء الله وشو كمان يعني بدنا نحكي يعني ما في مثلك صراحة دكتور سلطي انت انت دستور يعني بالنسبة للموسيقى العربية والثقافة العربية هون بامريكا فشكرا جزيلا جيب قلبي انت انا انا قلت من الاول انت مثل ابني وبتضلك مثل ابني وانا رافع راسي فيك ونحن كلنا كعرب بالغربة بالغرب وبالشرق فخورين فيك يا عمر وي ويت تو سي يو اون ساتردي حبيبي اند ثانك يو سو ماتش فور يور تايم اند فور يور اميزنج انرجي از اولويز دير بالك على حالك وسي يو يوم السبت الله معك سي يو سلامات بيس بيس علينا حبيبي